everyone, and welcome to Stack, Sip, and Spill. I'm Cherie. And I'm Reagan. And today is our very first top five. I love top fives and top tens. And Reagan loves me, so she's doing it with me. <laughs> it is going to be the top five things that we could not imagine living without as an Italian Greyhound owner. All right, everyone, since this is Stack, Sip, and Spill, what are you sipping on tonight, Reagan? Tonight, I am sipping on the same thing I'm pretty sure I was sipping on last time, and that is Sleepy Time Tea with honey, blackberry honey, actually. <gasps> blackberry is my favorite coming into this season. Yes. yes. Um, and I did find out this tea is actually the one you were talking about with the extra stuff in it for immunity. Yeah. The echinacea. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. You don't taste different. What are you sipping on? I am sipping on leftovers from Mardi Gras. Uh, Britt picked up an apple wine that is a peach pie flavor. So it's a peach flavored apple wine. Interesting. Is it a local? No. No. It was cheap. <laughs> it was cheap and it was peach. <laughs> but no, it's good. It's not super sweet. It's it's kind of Moscato-ish. I like... Someone had gifted us a, a bottle of Stella Rosa peach. Ooh, which is I like, love you just like Stella get Rosa. it at Walmart down here. And it was really, really good. I was so surprised. Mm -hmm. So I have a secret for you. Especially if you like Stella Rosa. Um, and if you have any kind of like... Um, specialty olive oil or balsamic store near you um we have plenty around here um but actually i learned this from the ladies up at our local one they put balsamics white or dark in their wines to sweeten it um, and i've tried it and it's really good i have a pomegranate um, dark balsamic and a cinnamon pear white and i put it in white wine and it's really good so it's stack, sip, spill, and recipes with Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of my favorite podcasts out there, because I'm a Disney fan, Disney World fan, is WDW Radio. And I love the way that they do their top fives and top tens, because the rules are there's no rules. That sounds fun. <laughs> As the host tonight. <laughs> I'm going to let you, my guest, go first. Reagan, what is, oh. doesn't have to be number one, just what is one of your top five things that you couldn't imagine living without as an Italian Greyhound owner? Okay, so my first one is probably not going to be any surprise for those of you that know Barry. And um, for me, I prefer to have boys. Um just because I've had both and I really enjoy having the boys more than the girls. Um, but with the boys comes pee, pee chest, pee legs. So my number one is wipes. You got to have baby wipes. They are so helpful. Um, keep them with me all the time. Anytime I go out anywhere with Barry, I have some by the back door, by the front door. If you go somewhere, wipes are handy. And you're a Kutra Ma with your wipes that you love yes um for barry uh he does not like cold wipes not that i blame him so he's kind of bougie in that way he likes them warm so i did splurge and buy a little baby wipe warmer and i have that by the back door so um i don't blame him i wouldn't want a cold wipe on my legs so, so you know wipe warmer it is I didn't, I actually didn't put wipes on my list. I didn't think about that. Mm. I do use them a bit. Not mm -hmm. as much, so. Yeah, well, Barry's a lazy peer. <laughs> I know. Lucky is a leaner. I'm lucky. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think Ben might say a leaner because he sees Lucky do it. You don't have to brag. Hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. Well, don't let him stink stay around Barry. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Um, I'm going to pick one. This is not my number one, but I'm going to pick one that I know you probably didn't put on your list. My okay. GPS collar. Yeah. Right. And I've talked about how much I like the Tractive. Um, but I think any GPS collar for 
an Italian Greyhound if you live in a big city. You could get a boy with an air tag, I guess. I like the kind that have GPS if you're out in the middle of nowhere. And it just gives me a lot of peace of mind. Uh, like when we're at dog shows, and I don't know anywhere. Because if your dog got out somewhere that's not your, near your home, you know, who knows where they're going to go. I could find him. And it gives me peace of mind. I mean, even when, when I'm, you know, out of town or I'm not home, if something happened, I would be able to find him. Yeah. I will never go back to not having it. I will probably start searching for one pretty soon, especially if I move, um, because that makes me nervous with not being in an area that he's familiar. So, yeah. It'll be one of those things, once you have it, you'll be like, I'll never go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry just likes being a nudist, though, and not wearing anything around the house. So, like, I don't even, even having a collar on him all the time kind of makes me nervous because I'm always in the back of my mind, okay, what if he gets caught or on this or that? And then I come home and he's like, you know? So that's just, (laughs) I, I. I'm on social media way too much and hear way too many stories. <laughs> well, well, you know what? The another one of my top five will ease your mind on that one. So okay. ah, that will be a that will be my next one. I'll say that okay. for my next one. Um, so my next one, um, you probably didn't put on your list, but it's something that I like to mention, um, especially to newer IG owners, and that is I always have tramadol on hand. I always take it with me places too. Yeah. That's smart though. Yes. I I have some at home. And then if I go um, on a trip with Barry, if we're going anywhere like out and staying for a weekend or something at a dog show, I always take Tramadol with me because you never know if something freak accident is going to happen. Um, he hurts himself and needs, needs pain relief really quickly. Um, but if you do give it to him, make sure you mention that to the doctor as soon as you take them in because it's still in their system. Um, but yeah, that's something I keep on hand. That's something I keep meaning to mention when I have a vet appointment. Say, hey, can I have an emergency dose for if we're at a dog show? And I just, I forget. I do keep any extra antibiotics in the fridge. I do always keep those just in case they get icky, icky poo tum tums. Yeah, I need to ask my vet um, for some because I'm, I had to throw out my last little bit because it was so old, like, you know, I I didn't want to give it to him. So anyway, yeah, get you some term at all. Keep it on hand. My next one is, I guess, a follow up to Reagan's concern of... If I leave a collar on him, he's going to hurt himself. Uh, we have the blink cameras. The Amazon Blink cameras. We yes. have, um, so I don't keep Lucky in a crate. And this is even something my breeders, I I showed them the space and I showed the video and we agreed, okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, because when I first got him, we had Dolce and Dolce was out all the time and always had someone home. He never really had a time where there was nobody home. So he didn't get... I won't say he's not crate trained because, I mean, you've seen him at the dog shows. It's fine. But he was never crate trained to just be home by himself. So we had to really be careful not to spring just being home alone on him suddenly to to, um, trigger separation anxiety. So we got the blink cameras because they're only like 25 bucks. And they came with, I don't know, 30 days free, something, something like that. And that way I was able to leave the house. And watch the camera. And the moment he calmed down, I came home. So that way I was able to really nip separation anxiety in the bud. So we don't have that problem. And um, we have two cameras. One in the living room area. And one in the kitchen area. And everything else is blocked off uh, with gates that he doesn't mess with. So at any time, if we're out and about and I'm like, Mm, it's been a while. Let me see if he's okay or if I should head home. I can pop on there and see if he's asleep or if he's going. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> so, yeah. but it, yeah, it's a nice peace of mind every once in a while. If I just have a, a, oh no, I can look and go, yes, he has not broken his leg. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I probably would have 
put that on my list if mine was, was still working. I had a camera in my living room where I let Barry have the room to himself because he's older now and like not adventurous at all. He just wants to sleep all day. Um, but it stopped working. It's not a blink. I don't know what it is. I don't remember. But um, eventually I will get another one. Didn't because yours I move? Did. Is that what you said? That no. Yours did the moving or whatever. Mm-mm. No, but you could talk through it um, and you could listen and it had like night vision. So I really did like it, but it, it's not the camera that messed up. It's my Wi-Fi, So it just disconnected and it won't connect again. So I don't know what the deal is. So, um, but I would like to have something that was maybe sound or motion detected Mm -hmm. or something. So eventually I'll, I'll get something back up. These are, these are the cheapest version, but they're motion activated they have the sort of night vision. It's infrared. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you can talk through it and you can listen through it. I yeah. almost never talk to him. But if I know, because I know him well enough, that it was like a package got dropped off or mm-hmm. uh, people are coming home, I might just real carefully go, go lay down. <laughs> and he kind of looks at it like, huh? Uh, Okay, but I don't do more than that because if he hears the mom's God voice coming through the camera, he starts going, "What yeah. the heck?" Yeah, you're in the camera. Okay, so that was actually your number three. So I was just looking to see how many oh, I had. Thank you. Um, so my third one, um, could probably be something you wrote down because it's it, obvious, um clothes um pajamas you need a good variety of different kinds um sleeveless um maybe some with the front two legs but not the back some with all four legs um because you don't really know like if you're traveling with them especially the environments you know if your hotel room is going to be warm enough the rings ringside dog shows if they're going to be warm um for barry i like to keep him warm before i go to dog shows especially in the cooler months because he's got a plate and screw in his legs so i like to keep that covered and if he's warm he'll do better in the ring so but yeah you need a nice variety of clothes for them light heavy cozy and soft so um i tend i have a lot of different kinds, <laughs> obviously. Um, if you ever look on Barry's of Instagram, different seasons has, and different holidays. Yeah, I could yeah. probably fill a whole closet full of Barry's crap, um, but it's fun. You get creative with it. Maybe you might learn how to sew some pajamas up yourself. Um, but yeah, you have anything to add about the PJs? Yeah, so I definitely put Jamie's down. So I went with the the direction of, okay, if I could only have one type of clothing, what do I find best for Lucky? So I get to knock two out with this one, according to the rules that I (laughs) – my rules, there are no rules. Uh, I would never go without – and, of course, my Italian greyhounds are on the bigger side. Lucky's now 12.8 pounds. Wow. Can you believe? No, Lucky. Benjamin. Benjamin is oh, yeah. 12.8 pounds now. Lucky's still 15. Wow. But can you believe it? I know. Uh, and my dogs tend to be kind of hot natured. When I had Dolce, she was a tiny little petite seven pound thing. And she was cold natured. But um, so with Lucky and Ben, I would never be without just a nice cotton jammy, not too snug not too loose comes all the way down the back with a turtleneck and no front legs Mm -hmm. no legs at all um one of my favorite pieces to get and i need to get more um have you ever heard of barefoot dreams i'm wearing one of their our our listeners can't see but you can i'm wearing my barefoot dreams robe Um, so they actually have a dog line and some of them are Disney, um, print too. Shut up. Where are they? Where can I buy them? Online. Yes. So they are so great. You probably have seen Barry's. Um, his is gray. Um, but I love them because they are not too light. They're not too heavy. They're just right. They've got the turtleneck and they're sleeveless. 
Um, so he's not going to get too hot. I that's one piece that I don't have to worry about him. Knock on wood, getting stuck in, getting his legs stuck in, you know, that sort of thing. And every time you wash it, it gets softer. So it's great. Definitely go check them out. Yeah, I like the no front leg ones because pretty much the worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to come out of a different hole. <laughs> you know, and if and if they squirm around, the back might roll up, but it's not going to get stuck on anything. Um, I love, for that particular style, Hermes Secret Jammies. We love Hannah. The Her uh, turtlenecks are a little bit loose around the neck, not too not too loose mm -hmm. to where like I can fit Lucky's Tractive in there or because first of all y'all you do not want and Gia can tell you Gia the Iggy can tell you don't put your collar on outside your uh, clothing because that's how they slip off and you run wild through New York City. <laughs> 10 out of 10 don't recommend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't think Gia would recommend that or her mom. Yeah. Um and uh, Hannah has started putting a little bit of elastic right in the belly there. So it has a nice little tuck up for the boys pee pee times. And they're cool enough that I can like in the winter let Lucky lay in his dog bed and be covered in his blanket. Or when he gets uncovered, he's not shivering and jumping up in my face. Let me under the blanket. <laughs> And you can always yeah. layer, like like Reagan said, have multiple. I recently got from the Pampered Iggy, because we also love Kathy, uh, this cute little winter layering thing where it's a stretchy, all four legs, and it didn't have a collar or anything. You know, it's just, just the four legs, and then a nice Sherpa jacket over it, so like more for in the south because she lives down here in the south too like this layer we can pull it on we can pull it off you can as you adjust as you see fit yes yeah. but that nice comfy it's like our moo moos you know it's just your nice comfy moment for nikki yeah so my next one um i'm gonna kind of piggyback off what we were just talking about keeping your iggies warm um I love buying baby blankets for Iggy's. Um, they're the perfect size. Blankets. Yeah. <laughs> well, specifically baby blankets. He likes all kinds of blankets, but I love getting baby blankets for Barry because they're the perfect size, especially for traveling. They fit in the crate well, and they fit in the stroller that I sometimes use ringside. Um, so I, and they come in all different patterns and they're not expensive. So they're so cute for christmas the puppy got a christmas blankie and it was so cute ben's is right over there it's the cutest thing it got left here though so it's just here when he comes over yeah so i hadn't even thought about putting that in the stroller that's a good idea that's a yes. perfect little size without it being bunchy that's smart um i did have blankets on mine but i'm gonna say the opposite the bigger the blanket the better that's just me so my boys aren't in a wire crate when they travel they're in the plastic crate so if i don't okay so i can't put the cushion down there because then they go Rah, cushion and it ends up laying on top of them essentially mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hilarious but you know not good so we usually put two or one really good size soft blanket in there to give them their footing and then if we're you know, turning corners or whatever. They have something to write themselves and still kind of stay warm. But yeah, no matter what, if you own a niggy, you're going to have a blankets, 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 blankets. Yeah. That also goes for the human too. True. I'm going to go with one that I don't think you put on your list and is particularly good for all sight hounds with long muzzles. A toothbrush. And we like the Tropiclean peanut butter tooth gel. And we call it toothy time. <laughs> so the way I taught, <laughs> yeah, toothy time. They're like, what? The way I taught them uh, to enjoy their toothy time 
they just happen to like the peanut butter flavor better. I was like, that's fine. It does, then your breath doesn't smell like meat. So that's cool with me. Oh. <laughs> I put a little bit on there. And for the... F- <laughs> it's for real. Does it smell like chicken feet? It's not nice. When you try to combine like mint flavor, a mint scent with a meat gel. No. I don't... That's that's a human preference. I don't like that. I'd rather them smell like peanut butter. So the way I tricked them, <laughs> tricked them, trained them <laughs> to uh, enjoy the toothy time is, I don't know, for like the first two weeks or so, I would just put a touch on there and just stick the toothbrush out there and let them chew on it. And the more they chewed on it, the more I praised them, just so that it was like a treat. And then I got to where it was toothy time. Lick it, lick it, lick it, chew it. Uh, I'm going to wiggle it a little bit. All right, I'll put some more on it. Because those tooth gel are um, enzymatic, right? So they're going to break down the tartar a bit anyways. Mm-hmm. And then they've never had any problem with it. But you got to be on top of the dental. Speaking of dental, um, this is dental month for vet clinics. So um, Barry has an appointment at the end of the month, which I'm nervous about because the vet that I'm using now I've never used for any kind of like anesthesia or anything. Like I, I'm sure they know, it, but I'm gonna triple check. But um, still makes me nervous because Barry's been put under a whole lot, and I just hate to do it when it's not necessary. But he really does need a teeth cleaning, so. And it is necessary, unfortunately. And it's yeah. like ten to fifteen percent off this month, so check with your vet. Okay, so my next one, um, you probably didn't put on your list. Um, but a must have is a heater. Uh, Barry. Ah, I didn't put that. Yeah. I just thought of it when we were talking you said something that made me think of it. Um, I, I mean, just myself, I use a heater every single morning when I'm getting ready because I'm just cold. Um, but Barry loves heaters. Uh, and if he goes in, f- comes in from outside and it's been raining, he's he needs to stand in front of something and get dried off and warmed up. So um, heaters are a must-have for us. I, I live far enough in the south. I'm on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. But when we had that Arctic blast a couple weeks ago, I did get out the heating pad and just set it in his bed to kind of warm it up so he wouldn't be like, no, I refuse. Because, <laughs> boy... I I loved sleeping with Dolce, and I called her my hot water heater, but whew, lucky yeah. it's like sleeping with a radiator. I wake up sweating every morning. Every morning. Mm-mm. Partially my fault, because I do love sleeping with a heating pad, even though I'm hot. So, I'm just weird like that. Lucky will get in the bed when he's cold, and when he gets super warm... If I wiggle at all, he'll go, oh, <laughs> he'll get in his bed. And I'm like, thank God. About time. So I think this is my number four because one of yours went back to back. So I'll okay. do my number four and my number five, which means I get to steal one that you probably wanted to say, a martingale. I actually didn't put that on my list because I figured you were going to say it. So... <laughs> Well, there you go. Taken care of either I, way. I'm in agreement. Yes. A martingale collar. Uh, my breeders will not even let you leave without a martingale collar on. We have touched on this in the past. A martingale collar is not a choke collar. It's not a slip collar. It is essentially your basic collar, but with an extra loop in the middle. And that loop is what you attach the leash to, and that loop can tighten up a smidge. Not a ton, just a smidge, so that it fits snugly against their skull, the base of their skull, right? So it doesn't slip off, because they've got those nice muscular necks. Um, And we love our fancy martingales. I have just a nice, basic, black webbing martingale that I keep as tractive on. I've got his fancy emerald green martingale from Beretta's Bling. That was his... Yay, you got your championship I thing. We've, I've blue. got a beautiful blue velvety martingale from Inzig R to IG. I probably said it terribly because it's not my native language, but her pieces are beautiful too. Very nice custom stuff. You've got some nice ones, Reagan. I, Barry said, no, they're mine. Yeah, um, that is true. Yes, yes. I my have... Apologies. 
<clears throat> Let's see. The first one that Barry ever got was um, from his breeder, Patty. All of her dogs had this specific kind of martingale, which was handmade by a friend. Um, and she unfortunately doesn't make them anymore, but I love them. Um, I still have his. He doesn't ever wear it because I don't want to mess it up. Um, and then I bought one from Etsy one time that had Florida Lees on it. Um, I don't remember. I know I got it from Etsy, but I don't remember like what shop or anything. Um, it's just a basic little martingale. And it was actually matching with my Border Collie at the time. She had another collar just, just like mm -hmm. it. So it was really cute. Um, he wears that one quite a bit still because I have most of his tags on it. It's really one that I like him to wear if we are um, like in a hotel or in someone's house. And because his tags are on it, they jingle. So I know where he's at all the time. Um, he does have like a normal little snap collar that I just bought him to wear in hotels. So it's not a martingale, but really just for if he slips out the door or something because it has my name and phone number on it. Um, and then he has a few from Beretta's Blings. We love them. He has like a one piece. Um, I, I don't know what she calls it. Um, but it's an all in one. It's a martingale and I think she calls it a onesie or something like that. Something. Yeah. Um, and then she has some collars. Oh, and I always forget about this because he doesn't wear them as often anymore. Um, he has a few from Sit Up and Beg, which is where I get my show leads from. Um, but there's a IG owner that makes leather collars, and they're so pretty and buttery, buttery smooth. So he has a few of those. He has one that's kind of like a, I don't know if it's alligator-looking skin or anaconda-looking skin. It was like his first actual collar that he had, like a martingale collar that wasn't passed down <laughs> um yeah and he has a, a matching set with boca his sister in georgia so it's like a turquoise blue with some crystals um and i just don't have them wear those often because they're fancier and you know i should get them back out though and have them wear it to a show i don't ever think about it because i have them in storage i have his green one in the dog show bag that's his fancy dog show one yeah so i get to give my number five and you use something similar to this. I don't know if you use cloth pads. Um, I know you do use the disposable ones when you make your little winter potty area. Um, I do have a yard, but I am neighbored by uh, dogs that don't necessarily like other dogs. <laughs> so I get to throw in this one, and I get to throw in audible mentions, as I'm mentioning. And you get to brag. <laughs> yours don't hide. Uh, hey. <laughs> wow so yeah so we have a cloth potty pad area by the back door now we have hardwood so if you're someone who has carpet all over the place i wouldn't recommend doing that but mine have not had a problem realizing the difference between the area rugs that we have and those potty pads i mean you could always just use disposable pads but um, first thing in the morning, I'm sorry. I am that lazy person. They're already gone to the pad before me. If Lucky gets up in the middle of the night, he knows exactly where to go. He goes, he does it, and he comes back, and we just wash them. And they're from Amazon. Um, la <laughs> Maybe like two-thirds of the year, our backyard has a mini lake. So I don't have to worry about him taking off like a horse into the surf. I'm just like, nope, you're using the pad, buddy. The end. And because we have those dogs who don't necessarily like other dogs, uh, when I do let him out, I use a long lead. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about that before. Lucky has a 30 or 20 foot long lead. It goes just long enough that he won't reach the fences or the big giant puddles. So if he does go out and it's raining or I don't want to go walk around, I could just kind of whoop, loop, tether it to the porch and... They have freedom without me having to worry about someone yeah. jumping a fence or whatever. So that's one of my honorable mentions. Do you have any honorable mentions you want to spout off fast, fast? Um, I have kind of a random one. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily for Italian greyhound owners, but just dog owners in general, especially if you um, 
crate a dog in your car, get a car seat cover. Um, I use one in my car oh, yeah. to not mess up my seats. Um, and I use it for non-dog things too, because for my job, I have to pack my car a lot. Um, so I, I always have a um, car seat cover in the back seat because I don't want to mess up my, my, my seats. So yeah, comes in handy. I still have one from when I had my Great Dane. I need to remember to, to use that. Um, so my honorable mentions, uh, bully sticks. People uh, say that Iggy's have notoriously sensitive stomachs. I don't know if it's notorious or if it just dogs in general have sensitive stomachs. Toy breeds do. You know, toy breeds are a little more responsive because there's a smaller body to react to new foods. But then again, you know, if I eat brand new crazy food, I don't know. I have a bad tummy too. <laughs> Anyways, but bully sticks, you know, they're not actually rawhide. They're not so tough that they don't pass the thumbnail check. I I am not one of those people that will give my dog anything that my thumbnail can't put a dent in. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to bite on something that hard. So bully sticks are great. And if they eat the whole thing, it's not the end of the world. Um, and my otherable, uh, my otherable <laughs> honorable mention. We just make new words up. It's fine. A family member or trusted friend to dog sit i could not imagine sending an italian greyhound to be boarded or in a like a doggy hotel yeah i have not had a bad experience at any of those but just because i know that they can have a sensitive temperament out of nowhere even you know i mean yeah a, a dog that is completely happy with everybody i mean like ben i mean i wouldn't want to send him off and then be like well now the sensitive temperament finally came out i wouldn't want to do that i wouldn't want a leg break on anybody so i would never go anywhere with someone that didn't really know my dogs really well and wouldn't be willing to treat them as their own yeah i mean i would say that's for all dogs when i had my great dane l she would have been fine (laughs) You could have sent her to a doggy daycare. She'd be like, oh, guy, nothing bad's going to happen. But I don't want them to have to worry about a small Italian yeah. greyhound with other dogs who are bigger and more rambunctious. And that also kind of goes with making sure you have a vet that is sight hound experience, too. Because you don't want something to happen with anesthesia or like I think I talked about this in an earlier episode, how... um Maybe the Italian Greyhound was placed in a crate that was higher up and it jumped out and broke a leg while it was there. So recovering from a broken leg. Yeah. Making sure you have a vet that has sight hound experience, been around sight hounds, know their temperaments, what they can have, what they can't have goes a long way. Yep. And don't be afraid to over-prepare. Reagan is amazing. When you went on your cruise, you told me about that uh, thing you left for your grandparents. It was like, here's yeah. his list. Here's his schedule. Here's the phone numbers. And I'm like, oh, duh, yeah. why haven't I done that? That's so smart. I think that was, I think that was some good top five-ish mm-hmm. things that we can't live without. Top five question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Top five. Um, as always, if you have any ideas or suggestions or or something that you thought we left out, like how could we possibly have not mentioned such and such, send us a message. Uh, our Instagram handles. Mine is Rough IGs. Reagan's is Barry the IG and Iggy Mom Ray. And our podcast is Stack Sip Spill. That's our Instagram handle. We also have a Facebook group that you are welcome to join. It is open to all. Yeah, if you have any ideas, suggestions. If you have a top five, let us know what's on your top five or what maybe your number one would be. Yes. Inevitably, we certainly missed something because these are all our individual experiences. Um, and we have not planned what we're going to be doing for our next long episode, so that'll be a fun surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you have any ideas. 
All right, everybody. Thank you for listening, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.